Hey, welcome back to the Muscle Intelligence Podcast. I am your host, Ben Pakulski. Testosterone optimization is a hot topic in the world and as very well it should be. Gents, if you are someone who wants to feel great, look great, and ultimately perform at your best, whatever your sport may be, your sport could be playing with your kids, your sport could be your business, your sport could be life. I uh, highly suggest you listen up, tune in, and listen to everything that Jay Campbell and I talked about today. Jay is the author of the Testosterone Optimization Bible. He's written books on peptides. Now he's writing a book called 30 Days to Shreds. Jay has really taken a, a really strong hold of uh, the optimization space when it comes to men. And we had a really great conversation that really goes all the way back to what's happening in utero for yourself and your children and your future children and your grandchildren and how you can ultimately protect men, how you can protect our testosterone, how you can protect your daughters as well, ultimately, and how men can learn to thrive from ultimately the day you're born or your children are born, all the way up into adulthood, all the things that are non-negotiables to optimize your testosterone naturally. What are the big levers and the small levers? Uh, overcoming some of the myths. Well, should you be taking testosterone? Should you be taking anti-estrogens and aerobic inhibitors? Uh, Jay and I have an amazing conversation uh, that's really going to enrich your understanding of human optimization, hormone optimization, ultimately how you can live a body or live your life in a body that you absolutely love and thrive. Uh, testosterone is a really big lever. And if you're not someone who ultimately understands it, this is going to be a great deep dive and, and certainly an accessible conversation. We're not talking about the, too much of the science, we're not diving into the research. We're really giving you a lot of actionable items that can ultimately give you some some immediate action steps. And if you need some motivation and inspiration, this may be good for you as well. Um, we get into some controversial things as well. Uh, if you do enjoy this podcast, listen all the way through the end because we do kind of take a little bit of a tangent at the end and get into some very, very interesting stuff as is always the case when you talk to Mr. Jay Campbell. Ladies and gents, thank you for being here. Enjoy this conversation with Jay Campbell. Today's podcast is brought to you by our friends at Buy Optimizers. Buy Optimizers is our longest standing sponsor of the podcast, and that's because their products work. I believe in them, and you believe in them as our customers and our uh, listeners ultimately, and they keep showing up for us. We want to show up for them. So if you're not already using magnesium, if you're not already using mass zymes, if you're not already using Capex, if you're not already using their amazing nootropic products, Head over to bioptimizers.com. That's B I O P T I M I Z E R S, bioptimizers.com, and use the code MUSCLE10 to get hooked up with 10% off. These are just truly incredible products. And the thing I love about them is they're foundational. They're things that everyone can use and everyone can benefit from. Um, the magnesium is the best. The, the mass zymes are, are non negotiables for me, they are always in my medicine cabinet. And they've got this incredible array of uh, very, very useful products that are really well formulated. And I've actually been diving into the nootropics a little bit more recently. Um, you know, obviously, how we show up mentally is a big, big advantage or potentially disadvantage in your life. And I'm really loving some of their custom nootropics. Uh, head over to bioptimizers.com. Use the code MUSCLE10. Enjoy the podcast with Jay Campbell. It's all the way to the end. I've got some amazing info coming at you as well. Mr. Jay Campbell. Mr. Ben Pakulski, how are you, my brother? I'm doing all right, man. You having a good morning? I heard better, but it's now a lot better <laughs> right now. Yeah, man. We'll dive into some testosterone optimization. So really what I'm doing is uh, putting together a compilation of uh, the best resources uh, in the world on testosterone optimization, and you are, my friend, are on that list. So thank you for being here. Thank you, my brother, for having me. It's always an honor and a privilege, and definitely I'm humbled to be here. So let's make some magic. It actually blows my mind. Every time I talk to my clients about testosterone and they're like, oh yeah, I read Jay's book and I'm in Jay's community. And I was like, Jay's doing good stuff, man. Good for you, brother. Like you, you've made a name for yourself. You definitely got a great understanding and your passion for it rings true. And thank you too, because you know, when you did this, when you and I did this podcast back in 2019, I mean, a lot of doors opened up for me. You know, you got me massive viewership. I, I still think it might be like one of the most viewed podcasts like that one. And the one I did with Mark Ripito are probably two of the most viewed po uh, podcasts really in YouTube history on testosterone optimization, you know, on really going deep into it. And you did an amazing job on the interview. So I'm looking forward to this one too. Yeah, man. I think we could probably go into some unique directions, but I'm not sure what your timing looks like, but I'd like to start kind of foundational stuff for people. Right. So 
assuming people coming into this podcast are, you know, they, maybe they don't know, right? Like, you, you know, I, I think we sometimes exist in this world assuming that people know a lot of things about testosterone and why it's important and, and why they need to do it. And uh, some of the BS that gets kind of perpetuated around around the world, I'd love to kind of get, you know, sift through all of it. So, yeah. So, let, let's start in kind of in kind of the beginning of, you know, someone walks into the gym and they're like, hey, man, I'm not getting the results I want. Why would someone consider, uh, well, yeah, why would someone consider taking testosterone in your mind? Should, and, and is this the type of thing that most men should be considering? 20 years ago, my answer would have been different than now. And I think you and I both know that we are literally living in contaminated cities. The planet is contaminated. The bigger the city, the more the people, the more the industrialization and modernization, the more the contamination. So the majority of people today, both males and females, um, you know, have hormonal dysregulation. And so if you're a man or a woman, obviously, and you're looking to optimize yourself from a physical capacity and of course a mental capacity, I mean, you almost have to get your labs drawn, right? You have to know what you're working with. Most people, you know, to answer your question specifically, have no idea. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate because most of them who do suspect that there's an issue end up going into a PPO or an HMO doctor, you know, again, an insurance doctor who has no idea about therapeutic testosterone or hormonal optimization or any of that stuff. And so what they do is usually put them on because most of the people are suffering if they do have an issue of uh, depression, brain fog in the afternoon, which are two of the biggest symptoms. And then sometimes just, you know, just a lack of interest in life, right? To address the quote unquote brain issue or the depression issue. And then if they do have some form of like sexual dysfunction or erectile dysfunction, they give them a blue pill or a pink pill, right? Cialis or Vi Viagra or Levitra. And so obviously the underlying condition, which is a testosterone deficiency is never even treated. So it's a it's a really tough issue today. You know, if you go around and, you know, ample where I live or LA or New York or Atlanta or any of the major cities, and you just look around at men, dude. I mean, you can tell that most people are uh by the BMI obese. You know, too much body fat. Yeah. yeah, too much body fat. And so, you know, automatically when you have a giant belly or too much body fat, it's almost in assumed that you have, you know, a testosterone deficiency because of the inflammation, you know, you have in your gut. So it's it's unfortunate um, today where we are because obviously there's a lot of people that could use treatment but never ever find somebody that can even offer it. I love that you started there. I actually was talking to one of my best friends in the world on Sunday, and he's this really holistic guy. Historically, he's like, man, you got to eat 19 vegetables a day, and it's got to be all organic. And and when I spoke with him the other day, he said, you know what, man, I'm not so big on the vegetables anymore. He's like, you know why? Because the soil is sick. <laughs> He's like, yeah, he's like the soil is sick, and you're consuming these these vegetables that are just deficient in, in nutrients and probably adding more toxins into your body. And like he's like, you know, the world is really confused, and I think most people need to start with blood work and like see what your body is deficient in. And uh, is your body sick? And if your body's sick, then and the food you're eating is sick, then well, then you're definitely going to be sick too. And, and dude, I love where you went with uh, just looking at the world, man. I was somewhere last week. Uh, you know where I was? I was at a, a water park with my kids. And the level of obesity is it's insane, frightening. Like it's truly frightening, insane. And I don't. And and you know what? The, what frightens me most, brother, is it's kids. Yeah, it's kids. Yeah, like kids. my son's buddies, they're all twenty plus percent body fat, and these eleven years old bellies, right? If their yeah. breasts, yeah. eleven years old, I was like, this isn't right, man. And I, and it's not their fault. No, like, like it's no. crazy. So as men, like how? And it's beginning that young, you know, and, and so. And you're, again, I know you're, this isn't your area of expertise, but what do you think kids or parents should be doing with their children to allow these kids to to not, you know, like, man, an 11-year-old boy, he doesn't stand a chance of having an effective puberty, of having great testosterone levels during puberty. You know, he's going to be broken. Like, well, yeah, any thoughts and opinions on like- Well, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I, I talk about this all the time and yeah, I'm not an expert, but Dr. Anthony J is, right? And you and I are yeah. friends with Dr. J. I literally just talked to him a couple of days about this and- Look, the reality of our youth today is most men and really women, it's the opposite of women, but under the age of 25, we now know that this all goes back to birth control. In utero now, most fetuses are not getting enough testosterone. And that is again due to the endocrine disrupting chemicals. Again, you know, as Anthony likes to say, the you know, the birth control washing off into the water supply. 
I mean, we know about putting, you know, male fish in the water, aqueducts, streams, lakes, rivers, tributaries. Now within one year, they become female, right? So, I mean, all you have to do is understand that like basically males are not getting enough testosterone in utero. And so they're coming out weaker, less bone density, fatter, because, uh, you know, that's the other thing is, right, is testosterone is lipolytic. So when you have a natural amount of testosterone in utero and also in, as a youth, you're going to develop stronger bones be less body, have less body fat. And then you also have to combine it with what you just said, the, the poisoned and the poisoned and contaminated environment, the food, the water, the plastics, the estrogenics, the phthalates, the BPA, all of these things are combining to just cause this like toxic soup mm -hmm. that young people live in. And so it's very difficult, but for parents, I mean, you have to be extremely proactive. I mean, look, I have two daughters, girl, dad, and my daughter's 15 and 13 and my 15 year old is extremely athletic. She's like a national level cheer competitor. You know, she's like Mary Lou Retton do 12 backflips across the room. You know, every time I see her, she's jumping up and spreading her legs as wide as she can. And then, you know, my 13 year old is, you know, luckily, um, genetically, she's pretty gifted in that she's not probably ever going to be fat, even though, it's, but she doesn't eat well. The other one eats well, does cardio every night. So, you know, our kids choose, but as parents, we do have a choice as far as what we give them from a food standpoint. And then, Ben, you know this, we also have to regulate their technology use mm -hmm. because the technology is what prevents them from exercising. It prevents them from being active. It prevents them from going outside in nature uh, and doing what kids like you and I did when we were kids. I mean, I mean, kids today are not kids, right? Like, what do they do? They're, they're doom scrolling. They're watching TikTok. I mean, it's like if you don't regulate their technology use, they'll just sit there all day and just watch videos. Yeah. And never they do it. They don't even realize they're doing it. Yeah. No, they don't. Like, adults <laughs> do this shit, man. I, dude, I'm sure you've been guilty of it at some point. I've been guilty of it at some point. Like, if, if, if a highly conscious adult can sit there and mindlessly scroll for any duration of time, then yes. how do you expect a child to be conscious enough to stop that behavior? It just becomes a, a spiral, a vicious loop. It's insane. And, you know, the other thing is, you know, I just had a profound podcast with Sal Stefano. He came on. I got to bring you on the podcast now. I was we'll something super, super deep, but I'll send you a link to it because it's amazing. I mean, he went, dude, he went off the deep end. Like he was like, bro, I can't do this on my show. <laughs> so mm -hmm. he went so deep on my show. It was just last week and we talked about the situation and what's going on and stuff like that. And basically the reality is, is that we cannot, if we want to choose to be vigilant with our children and not give them anything but, you know, God created foodstuffs and not give them box crap and GMO this and that, which is what pretty much every young kid eats today. And I, and I understand that, you know, some parents are crashed for time and they don't have time to cook home food meals and all these other stuff. But those are also excuses. We can give our kids quality food, but when we continually reach for, you know, the pack of the fruit little you know, things or whatever, anything that's just homogenized and coming out of a GMO package, that's what is poisoning our kids. And that's why you're seeing young boys with so much fat and they're so insulin resistant. I mean, dude, type two diabetes is a thing now in teenagers. Yeah. Do you know what you said earlier that I didn't think about, man, that that's crazy. I didn't think about this birth control. And so if a woman takes birth control in her teens and her twenties, and then decides to have children in her, in her late twenties, early thirties or forties, is her spouse. Well, yeah, that that estrogen still lingers in their system, and yeah. and so not only does does the estrogen that comes from birth control, but the estrogen that comes from plastics and makeup, all of it, and, all, and pesticides lingers in her fat tissue, and now this baby is literally bathing in it. It's insane, crazy. It's literally insane. And, 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 and so here's an interesting. I you know I did some I did a lot of writing on testosterone, and one of the research studies that is you know mind boggling is. You know, you mentioned, you alluded to this. Not only is the bone density of a child going to be less, they're going to be less muscular, but the size of their genitals is going to be smaller, their testicles and their penis. Yeah. It's crazy to think that there's this like feminization happening, even in the male species. And again, uh, just to think about that is crazy. And, 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 you know, my brain goes to both from a female, male and, and the child perspective, there needs to be some awareness around sweating. I'm like, I think for us, right. physical activity as kids, like you run, you you play, you're sweating every day. You're you're allowing your body to to eradicate some of those toxins, some of those estrogens, in at least some amount, right? And when kids sit on their butt all day playing video games, there's no there's no sweating, there's no exercise. Their body just holds onto these toxins and estrogens, and this becomes endocrine disruptors, which ultimately is like, hey, here's why you're 17 and you have the testosterone of a gnat. You know, like really, really not good. 
and and all and also you know going back to parents i mean we have to be leaders by showing them the importance of exercise right like kids are mimics right like if mom and dad are exercising they're regularly doing cardiovascular you know they go to the gym to lift to do you know to do bone bearing or bone building exercises like some of your kids if not all of them it's going to rub off on them like my 13 year old dude i literally came home the other day i i forgot where i was but uh we're road i told you we're rotating them right so that yep. the mom can still be involved and she was doing cardio i almost had a heart attack i i, mm-hmm. I, I was like what, what's going on to, to monica and my wife and she's like she's doing cardio and i'm like did you incentivize her or like what's she doing it for and she's like no she just said she asked me how she could get on the machine and create an id yeah so so the reality is is like our kids see what we do and they see how we are and so it's like if you're leading by example you know and this obviously also goes over to food like how are you eating your kids are going to do most of the same thing but something that you said that also triggered me is about you know the, the fat the, the estrogen in the fat and the and the chemicals in the fat bro that's the reason and look i'm not making excuses for these people but that's the reason that quote unquote the flyover country in the united states is so obese I mean, Anthony J was talking about this four or five years ago. And people were laughing at him, but the atrazine and the glyphosate in the air, in the heartland, it, again, the flyover country, as they say, is so high that the majority of these people, as you said, have it in their fat tissue and they can't even get rid of it. Like we Anthony all was have it in our fat tissue, whether you well, want to not. Too. Yeah, yep. we do too now, but like the really well. heavier people, like Anthony was talking about this. And again, I got to give him credit, you know, God. Dude, but we were talking to him six years ago, bro. Yep. But like, you know, he was saying back in 2018, 2019, that these people that are, you know, really quote unquote heavy, even if they did the exercise that you and I did, it would be a very difficult for them to still shed the weight because they're so laden with toxins. Yep. And nobody was talking about this. You know, Dr. Keith Nichols, you know, came up with his endocrine or what was it? Uh, testosterone resistance syndrome. And he attempted to get it published and they wouldn't let him. I mean, like, but he basically says that the endocrine disruptors now, you know, are cross-contaminating the androgen receptors. And so like you have like that in combination with all of the excess toxins. And it's like, what are you going to do? Man, I, so one of the protocols that I've been putting on lately is that I'll, I'll do an hour of sauna every day, put it down for 30 days in a row. <clears throat> and I think, you know, if you talk about getting these toxins out, I think the most effective strategy, obviously exercise can be a big one, changing your diet is going to be a big one, like you got to reduce what's going in. I think, and you could tell me if you have other strategies, obviously you want, there's some supplements you can take, we could talk about that a little bit, but uh, sauna might be the most effective, exercise, sweating, and sauna might be the most effective strategies to start getting these things out. I think saunas need to become just like non-negotiable for people. It is, man. I mean, I, you know, obviously I just came back and parachuted from Mexico from 10 months back into the States. What I've done twice in the last year is insane. And I sold my infrared sauna, but I have another one. It's on the way. Um, but it's crazy, dude. Like, you know, because you were talking about the food earlier and, you know, the friend you were talking about was talking about how the vegetables and everything are contaminated. Bro, what about meats? I mean, I mean, I will tell you this. We haven't talked where my wife is getting our grass-fed beef wherever it is here in some local butcher in tampa bro i told her to stop buying it Mm -hmm. i mean literally i taste the chemicals in the grass-fed beef now now again i'm very sensitive because in mexico as you know it's all farm to table food there is none of that down there right so it's like you know when you're eating clean quote unquote you know grass-fed and wild caught fish and meat and here it's not and so it's like, you know, because she always will simmer up a bunch of grass-fed beef on Sundays and then, you know, we'll just eat it through the week or whatever. And I just told her the other day, I can't eat this. Like, I literally taste the chemicals in it. So who's fact-checking the fact-checkers when it so, comes to so, grass-fed beef and wild-caught fish in America right now, dude? Dude, I'm sitting over here smiling because the first time I moved to the U.S. was 2007. And so I had, every year I had done bodybuilding shows, I did the same thing. My, my body was predictable. I could be like, hey- at 14 weeks out to do this, at 12 weeks out to do this, at 10 weeks out to do this. And I made these very specific changes predictably. When I moved to the US, I was living in California. Nothing happened the same. And I was like, what? Why is my body holding on fat? Why am I holding it like, like something's wrong? And then I was like, fucking meat. It's the meat. I'm eating chicken. I'm eating fish. I'm eating steak. <laughs> and it's um, it's California based stuff or US based stuff. And I was like, through my whole life, I took for granted the fact that Canada's got much, obviously, lower population. So that's. Yes. The rate of production of meat is much lower. 
Yep. And so I'm getting meat from these organic local farms. I was like, God, I didn't realize that the quality of meat in Canada is exponentially greater. The availability is less, but the quality is much greater. And dude, I held on to fat so much differently in the US. My body distributed it differently. I held more fat in my lower body. It was very interesting to observe. And I was like, end of one study. It's the same. I mean, and yeah, it's the same in Mexico. You know, there's no, and the difference between Canada, Mexico, and the US for people so they understand this, and you guys can fact check us this, is again, they, those countries do not allow the pesticides and the, you know, what do they call latrogenic estrogens in the air that they have in the, in the United States. I mean, they're, right. bro, the EPA is a scam in the United States. Again, Dr. J has talked about this. Keith Nichols and I have done podcasts on this. Keith has gone to the EPA and tried to get like them to release information and to admit that this is happening. And they, they the just EPA, you what? What's EPA? Oh, the Environmental Protection Agency. Oh, they, cool. so they pretty much cover up all of this. Yeah, and so they have studies about this stuff. So it, you can well, search PubMed. Listen, man, I, I think I think Canada also has horrible uh, pesticides, but simply the population is going to be less. So the production rates, the requirement is going to be lower. So people aren't trying to like speed their way through. Like we're going to douse pesticides everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. probably isn't the same level of requirement. So you well, actually find your old, Europe old and body. Canada are way, way behind. I mean, not behind, but in front of the U.S. and that they do regulate some things. Whereas in the U.S., it's just a giant contamination pool at this point. And, you know, to the lobbies, it, it's all money. Big Agra pays off everybody. So there's just no enforcement of anything. Yeah, man, sad. One of the things you said in there uh, that I want to kind of pull back on and double tap on is, so, you know, parents need to be leaders. And this is a really ironic uh, statement because you know, certainly men are evolved to lead the family. But when men are uh, obese and estrogenic and lacking testosterone, they move away from their uh, leader leadership nature and they end up becoming pacifists and, and followers and they're looking to be led and they don't lead. And I think this is, comes back to the testosterone conversation. It's like chicken and the egg, man. You're fat and you're not leading. Kids are following your fatness and your kids are following your laziness. And men need to be like, hey, I need to take control of my body and take control of my life so I can actually lead the next generation of humans. Dude, this is the mission of muscle intelligence. I want to give men back their masculinity, give them back their physical capability so that we can lead our next generation. That's literally why I do what I do. Yeah, and me too, man. And and look, man, I, I think it's important that we talk about obesity and we talk about just being fat and and you know, from an actual physiologically, biomedically understanding. Like if you're morbidly obese, you have literally cytokine storms going on in your body at all times. Now, again, morbidly- Inflammatory storms for people who don't know what that means. Yeah, Exactly. And, and morbidly obese for people that don't understand is according to the BMI. And I know the BMI is not an accurate gauge, especially for people that are like us that are more muscular and you know uh, bigger bone and stuff. But like at the end of the day, if you're 30%, body fat as a man or higher, you're technically considered morbidly obese. And when you feel, or let's just say you're carrying 30 to 35% body fat around you at all times, you never feel well, ever. You are in some form of pain or suffering 24 seven. I mean, like literally, even when you sleep at night, your body is screaming, help, help, help in so many different ways. So it's like, it's important, Ben, that people like us have compassion and empathy for people who are overweight because they are suffering. And obviously, as you said, it's much more difficult for them to start exercising. And then let's also talk about the dysbiosis, right? Like, so when you're also at that level, your microbiome is so highly inflamed and so toxic that for you to even attempt to not like go to eight to 10 hours to 12 hours without eating is a very difficult chore. Yeah. And so it's like these people are really, really up against it. Now, obviously, people all every day are losing weight and people go from losing 75 to 100 to 125 pounds and change their life. But it's a much more difficult task today than it was before, again, due to the toxic load that society is like burdened with at all times. Yeah, I think um, the mind and when you say compassion, man, I'm absolutely compassionate. And I think people need to hear it in, in a real way, man. Like, yeah, they do. I think people need to realize, like, listen, yeah, I realize you're struggling. I realize it's not going to be easy, but you got to, you got to do it, man. Like, if we don't change, we don't kind of take the initiative and and help the people who want to be helped. The world's not going to change. So it does require yeah. people being real, 
and you can't constantly use softeners. Be like, oh, it's okay. Like, it's not okay. And, and yeah, no, it's not. It's not, a, not that it's not okay. Like socially, I don't give a shit about your like socially. Right. I'm talking about like in in your body. Like, it's yeah. it's not okay hormonally. It's not okay from a health perspective. Like socially, like I, man, I don't care what you look like. I want you to be feel healthy. I want you to look, right. feel, and perform at your best. Uh, and I think yeah, that that to me is what ultimately is going to change the world. And feels like an uphill battle. Well, remember too, and 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 you know, again, the society, you know, whoever's behind the whole like fat acceptance movement is ill, right? Because again, you know, at the end of the day, being proud of what you look like is fine, but when you're morbidly obese and you're fat, you're not fine. You're a healthcare burden. You are a system burden, and you and I both know, bro, you are a shortened lifespan. I mean, there's no getting around that. I mean, you're highly inflamed. You have all that visceral body fat. I always say this, and people think this is not true, but visceral body fat is more inflammatory than kerosene. So when you start thinking about that, right, visceral body fat is what's around the organs, which is what causes dis-ease, right? So it's like, how can somebody think that that's okay? Like, how is that like pushed out there to be acceptance, right? Like being fat is perfectly, as you said, socially, if that's what you want to do, be my guest, you're going to live a shorter life than the average person. It's literally that simple. It's statistically proven because again, all that visceral body fat li- eventually leads to one of the diseases of aging, yeah. heart attack, cancer, oh. third, uh, you know, type diabetes. three diabetes. Yeah. Which yeah. is neurodegenerative oh, disorder. So yeah. you're up against it. Yeah. I hope it doesn't sound to anyone like a chauvinist conversation or a couple of guys who are super fit being like, Hey, you guys need to get in shape. That's not what this is about. It's like, Hey, well, no. what, how do we support you in doing it? Right. If you're someone who's like, Hey, I'm ready and willing to take action. That's what we're trying to get to the bottom of. Like, okay, what are the first action steps, right? What are the things you must be doing? So why don't we make that the next question, Jay? In, in your opinion, what are the top three to five things that that a man sitting out listening to this podcast or even a woman must be doing as non-negotiables? So, I mean, number one, obviously, is making sure that you are getting proper sleep, right? Like proper sleep, I would say right now is the most underestimated, most under- looked at you know component of everyday it's living possible for if you're obese and you're eating like shit d- there's no way you're gonna sleep well your infl- inflammation is gonna kill it but dude then there's this right oh, like so many people plug this thing in literally next to their head at night and go totally. to sleep they have no idea the power the electromagnetic frequencies that are coming out of these things these transponders these routers these wireless modems, whatever you want to call them. So there's like, so sleep hygiene is number one. Number two is obviously get your blood work done. You have to know what you're working with. I don't care what your age is. Look at 25, you should be getting your lab work done. You know, that you and I know there's tons of private uh, labs out there now. You know, one of the ones I work with is private MD labs, but there's direct labs, there's discount labs. You know, there's so many different companies. There's even labs now in Canada, thank God. So it's like, get your lab work done. If you're a man, you have to look at your free testosterone, your total testosterone, and your sensitive estradiol just to kind of understand where you're at. You know, we can talk about estradiol and testosterone at some point in this conversation because that's still so misunderstood. But the other three things are living insulin, what I would call living insulin controlled. And living insulin controlled is obviously suppressing, if not regulating your blood glucose production, which is again, coming from your consumption of carbohydrates. And, you know, Ben, most people by the time they're 25, you know, and this is, again, my opinion, should know, like, you know, what is their soma- their somatotypical expression? So are they an ectomorph, an endomorph, a mesomorph? Are they more ma- naturally muscular, naturally skinny, or naturally fatter? And the fatter you are, and even this goes to like the, the real skinny, you know, skinny fat ectomorphic types, the less carbohydrates they should be eating because their body just cannot pro- process insulin as effectively as a, you know, a mesomorphic type person. So- control your carbohydrate consumption. And then, you know, and again, I call it live insulin controlled. And then the other two things are obviously exercise, right? Like, are you building muscle? Muscle is the greatest deterrent to the diseases of aging. And it obviously is also like makes you a human sump pump. The more muscle you have, the more insulin sensitive you are, right? And then, uh, you know, obviously too, cardiovascular exercise, you got to strengthen the heart. You got to strengthen the vascular system as you age. So, you know, are you doing regular cardiovascular? And people don't have to do intervals or far lick or any of that stuff, you know, which is obviously difficult. Not that it's not good stuff for some people, but all you have to do is walk on an incline, on a treadmill or on a hill. I mean, obviously I know you and I like preferring walking in nature, you know, to connect with nature, but 
you know, those are really, to me, the most non-negotiable things today. You know, I know that was four or five things, but I mean, yeah. if you do those things, you're pretty much going to be okay. I mean, obviously beyond that, to really optimize, you want to look into hor- optimizing your hormones, using peptides, you know, low dose growth hormone, things like that. But those other things are the, are the, are the, are the non-sequiturs. Yeah. We'll get into that stuff too, man. The two things that, that what I, what I think people need to emphasize is what it sounds like is, is a behavior change conversation, right? So if we, if we talk about we need to change your behavior. The two things that I always revert to is own your time and yeah. own your own your arousal state, right? Own, own the state of your body. So most people have excuses around time, and then uh, then they're like, oh, "I'm stressed," right? So one, uh, I don't have time in the day. Bullshit. Own your time, which means yeah. do an audit, right? Every single person that starts my coaching, we do a 16 hour audit. So ideally, you're sleeping for eight. You got 16 hours a day. What are you doing? How much time do you spend on social media? How much time do you spend doing bullshit you don't need to be doing, right? I say, oh, well, guess what? We just found the hour you need to be doing exercise. The other thing is own, own your arousal state, right? So when you're stressed, your state of arousal is heightened and you end up getting this metabolic disconnect between your brain and your body. Your brain's going, I'm, uh, there's, there's a saber-toothed tiger, there's a lion yeah. in the and, you're, and you're sitting on the couch or you're sitting in your car. And so I think those two things when it comes to behavior change should be added to that list of like non-negotiables for people. Like, man, you, you got to own your time. Be aware. Because like I, I see people being like, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to make food. I'm like, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Because if I do, so do you. And uh, again, I'm you, both of us are just as busy as every single person who would ever listen to this, right? We have children and we have businesses and we train and we have partners and just lots. Yeah. But well you said. just make it a priority, right? He's just like, I, I'm not, I'm not going to not do this. So like, what else is going to fall by the wayside so that I can make time to do my training? Because otherwise you're going to be fat, sick, and lazy. Yeah, it's absolutely true. And I love that fat, sick, and lazy. But the the reality is too, is I left off the biggest thing and I'm glad you brought it up is, is you know, to, 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 to take time or to literally spend a part of every single day with a ritual, right? And, and, and for me, it's a morning ritual of sitting in stillness. You know, it can be meditation. It can really just be me being on my vibrogenics uh, technology, which I did before this amazing podcast today. Uh, to calm me down from like what I told you I was dealing with right now, you know, and, and, and it can also just be sitting in nature. You know, you don't have to have like advanced, you know, harmonic frequency tech that you need to use, even though it's great if you do have access to that, but uh, just sitting in your backyard with your dog, observing and listening, you know, something, something I learned the other day, and this is like full blown woo, but it's perfect to be on your podcast. If you go outside stressed out and you take nothing with you, no phone, no headset, no Bluetooth or anything, and you, you know, you can take your dog or whatever, and you just sit and li- this is, it sounds probably a little bit woo, but it's totally true. Listen to the birds. The birds are so connected to us at a holistic, you know, soul, you know, holographic soul level that they will literally change the tonality of their singing to lower your stress level. Mm. But you have to be tapped into listening to them and to really truly sit there and observe and listen. But I read about that, you know, and there's actually studies about this stuff out there on this, but I have done it two or three times now in my life. I learned this about a couple of months ago and dude, it's unreal. You could also take like uh, 432 megahertz frequencies. Uh, Like I have one called, um, I forget what it is. If it's symphonies of the angels. And you can play that and dude, it is the most amazing thing. Like all of the natural, the natural elements of uh, your surroundings that is, that can hear that intonation of that, those angelic melodies, they chill out. Like you should see my pit bull when I play that, like he automatically comes back into here and just sits right next to me and just completely goes into like a trance. And you can even, the other day I was playing a dude, I had a big lizard right up against my glass. I have a picture I'll send it to you after this thing. And I was like, that's the most insane thing. Like the lizard was literally up against the glass listening to the sounds. So nature does connect with us, but we have to be open to that. We have to be receptive to that idea. And so like, that's so cool to think if you just go out and you're stressed out and you listen to the birds, they'll literally lower your stress level. Yeah. And so there's, you know, just to kind of validate what you're saying, they're, they're, you know, sound, sound baths are a real yeah. thing, sound bowls. And some of them that are not made in, you know, like mass produced China, if these things are actually made legit in like Tibet or where they're supposed to be, from, yeah. are actually all tuned to 432 hertz. And when exactly. you play them, they have a healing uh, tonality. Yeah. And, and people would know that. Like if you've ever done sound therapy or sound baths, the ones that are actually tuned to the right frequency, again, I'm not an expert in frequency, but I, I'm very familiar with this this concept. Well, like it has a healing benefit to your tissues. 
So you're speaking the right stuff. And man, here's an interesting story. Last time I did ayahuasca, um, we were out in the jungle and we were in the middle of uh, this this retreat center. And the gentleman who was was leading, uh, the shaman was also playing music. And he was, it was, and this is before I was like deep in the ayahuasca. So I was aware of what was happening. He was playing music and he was, I don't want to say he was like controlling, but he he was playing a dialogue with the birds. Yeah. He, dude, like I have, I had a supported. He was playing and then pausing and the birds would play it back. It was yes. mind blowing. I was like, how do you do that? And he goes, I've just, uh, is I have just always been able to do that. I was like, this is, so I see some specific frequencies. <laughs> Sounds crazy, but like, no, but no, I mean, it, to it. But I'll send you the audio. Though. Yeah, it's not though. Like I'm actually rereading right now, Lost Teachings of Atlantis. And I'm going to yeah. send you that on PDF. You, you might've even read it before. It's an amazing book. It was given to humanity at night. It was literally given to humanity in 1997. And dude, I read it. You know, I've been on the woo-woo, full-blown esoteric trail right. forever, but I read it in 2004 and dude, consciously, I wasn't ready for it. So now I'm like rereading it. And like, sometimes you reread a book that you read, you know, 20 years ago and you're like blown to the back of the thing. But like, they have an entire section in this book about our true essence and who we are and how we are all connected and how all the natural ecosystem is connected. But you have to like, again, listen in, you have to attune mm. to the tune. And so that's exactly what you're saying. And that guy, you know, being a shaman, you know, being a medicine giver is completely connected to nature. Yeah. All right, man. Let, let's let's bring it back. Let's reel it back in here, Jay. <laughs> um, you, you said you want to talk about estradiol for sure, Again, man. Like what a, what a complex conversation, right? Around estrogen and for the listeners, we've been talking about Dr. Anthony J. And if you haven't already listened or read the book uh, Estrogeneration by Dr. Anthony J. Go out and get it now. Give it to all your friends. Yes. Just like everyone needs to understand this. Again, what a, what a you know, generational book, what a transitional book for people who ultimately want to understand Truly. how just fucked up the the environment is. And we're, we're living in this cesspool. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not neurotic, but I would say I'm obsessive about removing plastics and toxins. Like I yep. think you have to be, and as a, yeah. as a parent, you have to do it for your children to I mean- we talked about like, oh, we want our kids to do well in this world. And if you could do any single thing, like if I didn't send them to school, like, like no, you don't get to go to any great school. You're, you're going to stay home. If I could do any single one thing, I think it would be like controlling what goes into their body. Just because like they're going to get to 18 years old and they're going to be so far ahead physically and mentally of everyone else because everyone else is like trudging through sludge. And these people are gonna be like, oh, my brain actually works. So my hormones do what, it is, what they're supposed to be doing. And like, they're like, oh, everyone else is just fucking broken. And I'm able to do this from a perspective of like, oh, I actually feel really great. So everything in life becomes easier. They could literally be uneducated at 18 years old with zero education, but if they're physically optimized, so everything feels easy. And they're like, oh, well, I can do all these things. My memory works and my brain works and my penis works and my heart is open. And like, I, feel, I, I don't feel like I'm always stressed out and overwhelmed and anxious because like my hormones are regulated. Like if we could just do that for our children, we give them such an advantage. This, it's no doubt. I mean, my I, I told you this before, you know, just a you know quick side note, you know, when my daughter came here last year, when I sent her back to be with my ex and she was a freshman at Sickles High School, you know, they have a big time uh, cheer program and, you know, she didn't know anybody, was not connected. You know, I didn't go in and talk to anybody or anything. Um, and she went in and made varsity and she made varsity because Ben, she's been lifting with us since she was 10 years old. Right. And she was like so strong, you know, and again, this is the one that does take care of her body and has been emulating her mom and dad. Um, but again, she was lifting. I mean, I mean, you know, like it, if you just have your children start lifting when they're 10, 11, 12 years old, you know, and it doesn't have to be like super intense, like the kind of stuff that you and I would do, but like just to get on a program of two or three days a week, it's unreal yeah. the changes that they can make. And you're right. I mean, that teaches them all these other things that we're talking about in the show, self-confidence, you know, the ability to actually, you know, manipulate quote unquote time. I mean, that's the thing that people don't realize is like when you train and you lift weights and you build a, a, a really nice physique over time, you always have control over time. Tell me about that. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, like if you think about it, like somebody who goes to the gym regularly for 20, 30, 40 years of their life and they build a physique and they're strong. And again, they're resistant to disease, the resistance to gravity, they build strong bones those are people that have control over time because obviously they've got their life together. I mean, you know, you talk, you know, I was listening to what's this guy, that, that Bedros guy the other day. I, I yep. forget what it was. Somebody, yeah. Somebody sent me a clip of what he was saying. He says, 
If you show me a 40 to 50 year old fit man or woman, I show you a person who has controlled, who has control over their time. Yep. And he was attempting to say that like a person that has done that has obviously also modeled successful standards or programs or protocols or whatever in their life because they have been able to manipulate their physical body in a, in a day and age where very few people can in a way that behooves them to stand out, right? And it's not just from a physical mastery, but it's from a, a, a mastery of self. Yeah. yeah, totally. And and the thing that I would, I would add to that is, you know, I'm a big advocate of state control, arousal control. And if I can always be in the optimal state of arousal, right? And I'll say, what well, for listeners don't know what I'm talking about. Like if I'm squatting 500 pounds, I shouldn't be in the same state of arousal as when I'm sitting here with you or, or when I'm reading my, my daughter a book to go to bed, right? Those are different states of arousal, but people don't have the ability to kind of go through this full spectrum of arousal. So they lose the ends, right? They lose the top. So they never get to like high end, like peak arousal of, of exertional arousal. And they never get to the bottom. They never get to this calm, relaxed, call it Zen-like state. And I call it the warrior and the monk, right? Yep. And so we start to we start to have this like I call it the walls closing in around you. We start to lose that. When we lose those ends. Our ability to to uh, influence our productivity changes, right? I can't yes. be as focused and productive, and I certainly can't be as calm. So we end up living in this kind of medium beige state of arousal that prevents us from doing things effectively. So effectiveness drops. So you talk about owning your time. Well, what is time? Time is effectiveness. It's efficiency and right. effectiveness. So if I want to be super effective and efficient, then I need to own those extremes of of arousal, and people simply don't, right? And this is this is what we talk about like well. Start with meditation, start with breath work, start with a walking practice every day, non-negotiable, breathe, walk, meditate, and then add weight training on top of that, add great sleep on top of that. And all of a sudden, oh, now I can actually access these these peak states of arousal and do things that are more effective. Yeah. No, beautiful, man. I mean, I have really nothing to add to that. I mean, you know, breath, walk, get into stillness. I mean, I mean, that's, I mean, it's non-negotiable, bro. I mean, like you imagine, like, I mean, imagine if you didn't do that. Well, you'd be like the average person, right? But like if, when you do this, you take control over your states. And look, in today's world now, there's, I look at it as it's bifurcated. You're either empowered, sovereign, and free, totally in control of everything that you do in your life, or you're a victim. Mm -hmm. And when you're a victim, you're not empowered. You're actually, you're disempowered and it's not your fault, you know? you're not accountable, you're not personally responsible. So it's like, we all have a choice. Your state of being, as you say, your state of arousal is literally a choice. So every single day, no matter how bad your day is, and again, remember, everything that we look at is a labeled perspective. It doesn't really mean it's so, right? If you label it as a bad day, it's just because observationally you classified it as that. What if you classified it as a learning experience opportunity day, right? So it's like, everything is just a state of us observationally declaring it as such. So again, I always tell people, no matter where you are in your life, you can literally decide that today is the day that you change to go from a positive mindset and a positive state of awareness from a quote unquote negative or victimhood state of awareness or mindset, which is again, you're not personally accountable. I, I used to tell my 13 year old daughter when she would complain all the time, I'm like, Gabby, and my wife hates me using these words, but I would always say, Gabby, it's your fault. Even though I knew it was it, if you get someone to take ownership for everything that happens to them in their life, then they will understand that, that like everything that happens is a choice for me to either learn and grow from or to classify it as- yeah, Man, uh, that's a hard one though. Victimhood. Dude, I get what you're saying. Uh, it's a hard one for kids, right? Cause, yes, cause it is. Kids, kids can take that to mean I'm a bad person or- like, because kids, I always talk about, you know, at most adults aren't in control of the ability to to understand or regulate their emotions. Sure. And so we throw something like that on a kid, you're like, oh, everything's my fault. It means I'm a bad person or I'm not good enough. So I'm like, I'm really, I'm really careful with how I throw that. I, I, well, I mean, I, I tell, tell her, I mean, tell her, she, she complains a lot and I tell her a lot that Gabby, you have a choice to complain or not. Yeah. And whether or not you perceive it as this, that, and the other is against you, or I'm not supporting you, you have to get to a place where you realize that you are accountable for everything that happens to you in your life. Yeah. So it's like when, you know, when she's acting up and stuff like that, I'll just say, no, it's your fault. Just like that, you know, and she'll get all mad at me and stuff like that. But she understands that I'm coming from a place of like teaching her that she has to become sovereign. And I think too many people are teaching their children to become sovereign, you know, 
And, and as you know, the narrative teaches everybody that you don't have to be sovereign. It's not your fault, Ben. Oh, it's everyone else's fault. And so, man, I, I love that. And I would say that makes a lot of sense as long as, and I know you do this, as long as you're there to also support them. So it's not like oh, it's your fault and you're on your own. It's like, hey, it's your fault and I'm here to, I'm here to walk with you. <laughs> you're on your own. Get out! Well, I'm here to walk with you through this challenge, right? And exactly. I think I think a lot of parents need to just parse that. It's just like throwing a bunch of responsibility on a 13-year-old girl when she's confused as fuck to begin with is probably hard. But if you're like, hey, it's your fault and I'm here to support you through it, like, okay, now the kid doesn't feel alone. Like, they're like, oh, what do I do? I'm confused and don't know where to go. It's working because I came home the other day and she was on the She's like crushing a it. treadmill. Good. Yeah, I have no I'm doubt. Like, what's All right, going so on here? We, we said we we're going to, you had some some explanations around estradiol and, yeah. and helping people parse that. So let's get deep into that. So, so the average physician that prescribes therapeutic testosterone does not understand the importance of estrogen. In the in the in the endocrine system and and what's happening and so just and again we talked about this on our podcast five years ago and it's people are getting it, sadly it seems like it's getting dumber and there's more and more bro science but estrogen is what confers protection to biological systems right so when you take therapeutic testosterone it obviously is converted to estradiol through the aromatase enzyme and then the aromatase enzyme produces or, or creates estrogen and then estrogen is what goes through the body and exerts a protective effect on literally everything. The brain, the vasculature, the heart, bone mineral density, the skin, the nerve fiber bundles, all of these things. So when you're on therapeutic testosterone, if your doctor is prescribing an aromatase inhibitor medication, which is you know short for an AI, they are literally stopping the beneficial effects of therapeutic testosterone. In fact, making you more susceptible to a shortened lifespan for all the bad reasons that are the the negative side effects and symptoms that uh, suppressing estrogen causes. So, and and again, I see this so often nowadays, Ben. Uh, it's crazy. We were talking about this on the um, health optimization podcast a couple of weeks ago. They're now compounding testosterone and and AIs together in injectable preparations. They're giving guys uh, clomiphene and AIs in capsules as testosterone optimization. I mean, it's the most insane thing, dude. So, so just money makers, day, right? Just, I'm sorry, say that again. It's just money makers. People are trying to exactly. Trying to cash in. They're making money, but but at the end of the day, it's at this point now. We're in 2023, almost in 2024. If your physician is still prescribing you an aromatase inhibitor, please get a different physician. I mean, it really is that simple. There is no medical so, need ever. I mean, Dr. Rob Komenarik, who's been prescribing hormones, I know you know him, he, you know, yep. for 26 he's years great. now, he's a great friend of mine. You know, he will say to you, he, he's like, I hate when Jay, you know, goes extreme. He's like, there are select medical, you know, s- uh, situations and outliers where we will put a person on an AI, you know, t- and then titrate them off because we know the harm it causes long term. But look, nobody on therapeutic testosterone, okay, for unless you're one of those outlier specific people, and believe me, it's a very small chance that you are ever needs to be on those again due to the long-term harm they cause so again i would just say that the simplest solution is find a doctor who understands that using therapeutic testosterone you want to allow your estrogen to fall to its natural level now the truth is is that and there's not a lot of science that supports this but the the protective level of estradiol in a man on therapeutic testosterone is somewhere between 70 and 100 Okay. Now, if you're 125, 150, 160, and you have no symptoms or no side effects, then that's fine. The problem is, Ben, is that the docs, you know, again, who are working with the the laboratory ranges that are compressed values, um, are trying to keep their patients in those, you know, standard mean deviations of like 22 and 40 or whatever it is. I think it's 24 and 44. And it has no correlation to people who are on therapeutic hormones. So that's where the biggest problem is. So again, you have to work with a physician that understands this yep. and isn't going to keep you in that narrow range, which is really truthfully unhealthy. And there's also docs out there, I won't name them, to keep their docs or keep their patients under that range. And then these guys feel like that, literally feel like that, you know? So don't do that if you're so, watching this show. Yeah. So let's talk about why um, people's estrogen's high, right? You take testosterone, you're, you, as you mentioned, your body converts from- testosterone into uh, estradiol via um, these aromatase enzymes, and that's why these aromatase inhibitors. If your body fat is elevated, your body will convert more testosterone. So first thing you guys need to do if your body, if your estrogen's high, lose some body fat. Second, again, the the, the uh, effect of 
environmental estrogens, again, I'm not sure that I can draw a correlation there. Can you draw a correlation between xenoestrogens, things that are coming from plastics and pesticides and phthalates, uh, directly influencing estradiol levels you know, in, in blood markers or where, how is the, what's the correlation there? Because I don't know you can measure it as estrogen. No, 100% we can. I mean, so again, Dr. Keith Nichols, you know, with testosterone resistance syndrome, you remember, he, he was talking about that when you met him five years ago. It's Swiss, yeah. right? Back in yep. 2018, it's crazy, bro. It was five years ago. But like, you know, he couldn't get it, the, he couldn't get the paper published. Nobody would accept like all the research that he was doing. So he just gave up. And then, you know, he started going to the endocrine society, their yearly meetings. And he was like talking to all of them and like none of them would even speak to him. So he's like, Jay, I just gave up. He's like, they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to admit it. But yes, the phytoestrogens, you know, the xenoestrogens, all of these things in the environment are also sticking Again, to visceral body fat, you know, coagulating, you know, inside the the rinds of the fat, causing these issues. So you you named it, and 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 it's also I think very important for men to understand that when doctors label them as having high estrogen symptoms or side effects, that is a complete misnomer. What they have is what you just said: they have high visceral body fat and high inflammation, and the inflammation and the visceral body fat is what causes the quote unquote assumed high estrogen symptoms. And again, let's define what these symptoms are. These symptoms are nipple sensitivity, mood alteration or imbalance, water retention, just a feeling of being off. And again, this is 90% of bros in the testosterone using community. And I'm not talking about bodybuilders. I'm not talking, you know that industry way better than me, but for guys on therapeutic testosterone, if you're 20% body fat or higher, you are going to have high estrogen symptoms. Because as you just said, you have high levels of inflammation, you have high levels of visceral body fat. And look, here's something else that nobody talks about this. And I did not say this in 2018 because I didn't know. Now I do. If you're a guy with a belly, again, a lot of guys on testosterone have a belly and you're injecting subcutaneously right into that visceral body fat, that's causing cytokine storms. Mm -hmm. The body is seeing that testosterone, even though it's going to be good for you long term, as an exogenous element combined with already the fat that you have there, which is already producing cytokine storms, and now it's creating another one. So that's why you have, quote unquote, more elevated, again- Just specifically because they inject subcutaneously to the fat or what specifically, Jay? That's literally what it is. It's literally seen as a inflammatory cascade from the testosterone into an already inflammatory cascade. So if they go into the muscle, they can avoid this? Um, somewhat. I mean, they're still going to have quote unquote high estrogen symptoms if they have too much body fat and inflammation, but absolutely it will not be as pronounced if they do not inject right into the belly. Yes. But they're still going to have them. So, I mean, it's not like they're going to go away. And then obviously it also comes down to the physician having awareness of there are no such thing as high estrogen symptoms because again, and, 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 and very smart doctors have had this conversation with me. They'll say to me, but Jay, if the patient comes and complains that they have all of these side effects, again, what we label as high estrogen symptoms, water retention, mood alteration, imbalance, and then nipple sensitivity, what do I do? And I say, you either lower their dose or you teach them to lose body fat, as you already said. But writing them a script for a CIRM, which is a selective estrogen receptor modulator or an AI is not the solution because A, we know what it does long-term to their health span. Yep. So I say my, my first order of business is you need to sweat every day. And that means you need to exercise and and not not or and get in the sauna and i think those things should go hand in hand i think people should exercise first and try to get in the sauna right away because it actually increases excretion of, of toxins yep but yeah so that that's a big one like you got to be sweating and people just don't sweat enough right like spend time outside spend time moving that's that's your greatest mechanism of excretion of estrogens then you could also look at supplements that bind and excrete estrogens like uh dim sulforaphane uh calcium deglucrate in, in combination um, but those ones are again, effective, but I think if you're not exercising and obviously putting yourself in a caloric deficit at some level, it's not going to work. Yes. I mean, that that's the best thing that can be said. I mean, the reality is, is like how many bros, I just love saying the word bro, use therapeutic testosterone. Again, these are 40 to 50 to 60 year old guys who just want to be bigger, stronger, have better erections. They know what testosterone gives them, who don't do cardio. You know, they go to the gym and they lift, but they don't do cardio. It's like, dude. You got to do cardio. Like, I don't care how muscular you want to be or how much you think it's going to limit your gains, which is not true anyway. True at all. You, you literally have to strengthen the aortic valve. You have to strengthen the, you know, all of the vasculature 
through here, you know, uh, upper breastplate, because again, that's how you have heart disease or heart conditions or heart events later in life. I mean, think of all the plaque buildup and all the stuff that happens from not doing cardio. So you're right, bro. It's very simple. Do cardio, even if it's just 20 to 30 minutes a day walking on a hill in your neighborhood. You know, what does Stan, our friend Stan Efforting, he does three 10 minute walks a day. I mean, how how easy is that to do? Yep. Every Control time. Control Control yeah. the time. Yeah, every time you eat. And again, all the guys listening, you're like, hey, I'm busy. Great. Great. You're doing a meeting. You know, you're doing a meeting now and you're walking, right? <laughs> right. Get a walking treadmill. Those treadmills standing at your desk while you're working. They even have those now. Yeah. I'll tell you the, ba- the biggest lever that I give a lot of guys is like the morning workout becomes non negotiable. Yeah. Even if it's 30 minutes, of course. Yeah. And your target is you got to hit your peak heart rate. That's, that's my target for my guys every morning. And if it doesn't happen with weight training, it, it happens with cardio. I'm like, that's the target. That's non-negotiable. I need you to hit whatever your max heart rate is at least once. And if you do that, I find metabolically people are more effective throughout the day. Uh, they tend to have a better arousal control throughout the day. They have better, better appetite control throughout the day. It's like, start the day with something simple, man. Like, get a, get outside and move. And, and walking is okay, but I often say walking is not enough. Like, I need you to, to if you're going to walk, you need to walk like somebody's chasing you. So I love that. And I would even say, this is a super hack. This isn't 30 days to shreds. Man, I wish I had the PDF right now that I could just give you and say for everybody that watches this. But uh, so after they lift, after they do their bone build or their resistance training or bone building you know, workout, dude, jump on a low intensity, not low intensity, but a low impact cardio machine and go to work for 10 to 15 minutes. Because remember, your heart rate is now already 125 to 135 and perhaps even higher, 140 from a good workout from lifting. Yep. Now, you don't have any warm up. You're just right into zone two or even zone three. And do 10 to 15 minutes, three times a week, You know, again, post-training, so they're, assuming they're lifting three times a week, is amazing. Make a big difference. For accelerating caloric burn and also just maintaining low body fat. Yeah. So I, I do that and I like to uh, I like to put guys on things that are going to drive up lactate. Like I want people to, yeah. Yeah. I need their body to become more effective at, at moving lactate or clearing lactate. So if, if you're someone who can get on a bike and generate a bunch of lactate, then that's what I want you to do. And I want you to do it often because I want that's you what to I do. become better at it. Because if people's resting lactate levels become elevated, they become really that's into right, dude. burning fat. Yeah. You're right, man. You're right. That high, the high intensity stuff, high, high to mid intensity stuff is, is vital. And, you, and, and the thing is, is like, you know, guys hear that and they're like, oh, bro, man, intervals kill me. But they're already, their heart rate's already elevated. elevated. Yeah, yep. your heart rate's already elevated. You get on there and you start pumping at like 15 to 16 for like 30 or 40 seconds and do it like six or seven times and, you know, with the opposite amount of time off and then you're done. Yeah. And you don't even feel it. I mean, it's, it's nothing like starting right on a bike and then, you know, going in and building up and then hitting intervals that's much more difficult but when you're already with the elevated heart rate from the lifting it's it's pretty easy you just have to do it yeah and, and the thing listening to what you're saying you're right guys like oh it's hard yeah good right and and when we start changing our relationship with hard and saying like hey i intentionally move toward challenges instead of away from them this is something i teach my kids man i think everyone should teach their kids like when something feels hard or when you're afraid of something sit with it for a second and just acknowledge it yes i'm afraid Yes, I'm afraid. Yes, it's going to be hard. Good. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you have to train your brain and your body to move toward those things and not away from them. And I think so many of us create the life we don't want by moving away from challenges, right? And that, that includes everything. That includes like the pursuit of partners, the pursuit of businesses, the pursuit of finances and like, oh shit, it's hard. I'm going to move away from it. I'm going to go find something that's comfortable for me. And just fucking, everyone just creates this life that they don't want. And like, as soon as you, oh, if you do that one hack, like stop acknowledge your fear. Dude, I get it every day. I'm like, yeah, I, I acknowledge my fear in the situation and I'm going to go and do the best I can. And we have to. That's all you can do. And I love that. I mean, all you really have to do, and this is the same thing that you're saying, just said in a different way, is just instead of labeling something as negative, come from a place of like, how can I learn from this? Yeah. yeah. How, how can I learn from this? Like what what this experience is giving me the opportunity to either want more of or want less of, and either if it's either one, how do I learn and grow from it? And if we just look at things that are difficult slash hard and get labeled as such as the greatest opportunity for evolution and growth, I mean, my God, dude, I mean, we're here as souls to evolve and grow. What's going to make us evolve and grow the most? It's the most difficult, greatest contrast. Oh. Yeah, that's why I say exercises, right? Exercise is your daily battleground to to move toward those things because everyone stops exercise because it starts to hurt. 
like, oh, it burns. I'm going to stop. But they don't realize that's fear. Your brain goes, I'm trying to protect totally myself. Do. That's a fear-based response. So if we could say, oh, I, I feel my desire to stop. I feel my discomfort. I'm safe. Keep going, right? So if you ever work out with me, one of the things I'll say to all my training partners is like, you're safe. Keep going. You're safe. That's right. Keep going. That's right. Because at the end of the day, your brain's going, I need to stop. I need, I'm, I'm not safe. Oh, yeah. No, you're safe. Right. And the closer you closer you can move to that proverbial fire, you're like, yeah, eventually that fire becomes your best friend, right? Eventually that fire, you're like, fuck yeah, this thing is where growth exists, where, where optimization of body and self exists. And I will just say to shout out for you, man, like, yes, I've trained with Ben for two days and I would definitely still say that this guy can teach people to build muscle more better than any person that I know of on planet Earth. And I and I mean that when I say that. Thanks, man. I You're welcome, man. I, yeah, I like what I do. I like, I think it's, um, I think muscle building is easy. I think muscle building is the easy part. People just need to get through their mind. And uh, sometimes, as you say, controlling the mind is is the gateway. All right, now let's let's talk a few more things about testosterone before we before we wrap on respect for sure. our time. Natural optimization of testosterone. So this guys are like, man, I'm not sure that I want to supplement, and I, I'm not sure that I want to take exogenous testosterone, and I want to optimize it naturally. You know, we talked about getting the body fat down. That's the single most important thing you can do. Actually, sure. the second most important thing you can do. What else can can and should they be doing for guys who are you know mid 30s, early 40s, even 50, and be like, man, I, I'm not there yet. I, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to take the plunge because I'm afraid I have to do it for the rest of my life, which is probably a reality. So obviously I look at things differently nowadays, again, 20 than 20 years ago, but it's still possible to naturally optimize, you know, Dr. Rob, just to give him another shout out, you know, so we're rewriting the TOT Bible. We're just going to edit it because it's only 85% right, right? So there's going to be some changes that we make to it that we got wrong a long time ago. And then we're also going to cover women much better, but like we talk about natural optimization, like what are the percentages of people in today's contaminated sick? fat and lazy society as i love your little uh, classification there like what are the what is the real percentage of people who can naturally optimize in their 30s and 40s and dude it's less than 10 percent yeah. and the people that are in the 10 percent class are also very you know retentive right these are type a personalities they're very organized they're very controlling and manipulative and in power of their time they own their time so that's 10 percent of people and that's like in 30s and 40s when you get to 50s and up you just have that you're five percent, right? So, but what can these guys do? And these guys that are naturally optimizing—I mean, you already said it best, right? They have low body fat. They just keep themselves in really good condition. Their diet is very, very on point. They always live insulin controlled. And most of the time, let's be honest, these are genetically blessed people. These are people that are probably a combination of a meso ecto. You know, they don't put on body fat easily. They can get away with you know eating you know more than the average person. Um, these people also, as you know, do not drink alcohol. Right, because alcohol is absolute greatest solvent, poison, nerve toxin, whatever you want to call it. You know, as you get into your forties and fifties, so just take mushrooms instead. <laughs> it's five meo, right? Like, but the but, but the reality is exactly, dude. But like, the reality is is like, you know, I had this. I, I was on the front row dad's podcast the other day. I should introduce yeah. you to that guy. Yeah, uh, I know John. I'm actually in front row dad. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So I was on their podcast the other day, and we talked about alcohol. Yeah, I love John. He's amazing. And so he basically was like, can you just go really deep on that? Because he's like, I've heard you speak about it. And I know you're really, really outspoken. And just tell us like where that is. But like, if you want to be naturally optimized and again, not use therapeutic testosterone, you can't drink alcohol. It's, it's, it's just, there's, it's a non sequitur. I mean, you, there's nothing else you can say. Don't say to me, oh, well, you know, I enjoy two glasses of wine, you know, three days a week or something like that. Okay. Well, you're not going to be optimized. I mean, dude, we know this biochemically, the human body can handle four ounces four ounces of, um, what do you call it? Um, a fermented grape or, or grapes of wine, basically alcohol, right? Again, when you look at the biochemical conversion of alcohol, it gets converted to triglycerol and then triglycerol gets converted to triglyceride and that becomes visceral body fat. So, I mean, over four ounces, which as you know, bro, is nothing. You know, I'm drinking this Propel water electrolyte thing. And what is this? This is a 12 ounce bottle. Oh, I'm sorry, a 19 ounce bottle, right? So four ounces is like this. Right. That's it. So, I mean, like when people understand that any a amount over that is converted literally to triglyceride, which is converted to visceral body fat on your body, you cannot be optimized by having fat from alcohol. So and you're destroying your gut. Well, I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, God knows what kind of pathogenic response and dysbiosis you create in the, in the microbiome. But so beyond that, like just to say this, because I just also just had a, was on a biohacker or biohacked or whatever their podcast and was talking about this, like, and again, I don't want to call people out, but 
there aren't any natural supplements that you can take that is literally therapeutically going to optimize your hormones more than transiently. Yes, there are studies, phagodosia and, you know, tribulus and all these different things, you know, uh, what is it? Gly magnesium glyconate, all these different things, you know, have shown at various levels and, and dosages to enhance total testosterone 100 points or 200 points or whatever, and maybe even elevate three testosterone 10 or 15 points. But again, none of them do it any more than transiently. So if you're one of those guys out there buying these, you know, over-the-counter test-boosting supplements, you're pretty much throwing your money away. Now, obviously, I want to say this, and obviously, you and I talk about this, and again, being who we are, we have to say this, the placebo effect is very real, okay? We are nothing more than mind. So if you believe in that supplement and then you live the lifestyle that we just talked about that you have to do, you live insulin controlled, you train, you keep low body fat, uh, you get good sleep, you know, you do all those other things, then you probably get good results and tell everybody that it works. But for the average person, they're not going to get the same results and no one is going to get the same results from using that comparatively to using therapeutic testosterone. But I mean, I totally respect and get the people that don't want to go on therapeutic testosterone because as you know, yes, you do have to use it forever. But I mean, I look at it as like, why would you not in this contaminated world? It's the biggest tool in the tool belt. Yeah. So you said it right there. So the way I explain this stuff to people is the size of the lever. And so when we talk about supplements, supplements are a very small lever and they should always be always be considered a very small lever. They're a lever, but they're a small lever. So when we talk about testosterone, you're looking at, okay, well, sleep is a massive lever. Body fat is a massive lever. Diet obviously becomes a massive lever. Do you know what's a big one that we didn't talk about that people, I, I would say- if you had to spend your money on supplements or this, well, that, this is a no-brainer. It's sunshine. Like, yeah. go go get a tan. Like, go spend time on the beach. Ideally, you know, move on the beach, but just fucking like walk on the beach. Or if you can, like, get get in the sun. Uh, that's, that's why like, I use Melanotan 1 and scream about the consciousness enhancing effects of Melanotan 1. But absolutely, man. Sun, like, I don't even live. I won't live anywhere there's not sun. Yeah. Yeah. And that that's just, again, I think that's a... A way bigger lever than than any supplement that exists, right? Sleep, big lever. Uh, movement, big lever. Uh, meat, big lever. Potentially. So, talk to me about melanotan one versus two. I know we talked about this last time, but I actually don't. So, I know two um, tan plus spontaneous erections. Oompa <laughs> <laughs> tan. What? Turns you. It's an oompa loompa tan. It turns you orange. So, melanotan two and melanotan one. I've written obviously prolifically about both of these. Melanotan 2, I'm not a supporter of for two specific reasons. One, it does darken moles, which obviously has been shown that, you know, if you have a genetic predisposition or you think about getting cancer all the time and you don't want to have cancer because it runs in my family and the doctors tell me it does, you don't want to use melanotan 2 because it will obviously darken moles and p potentially accelerate, you know, metastatic tumor formation. There's some studies, a couple studies uh, that have shown that people who have darkened their skin using melanotan 2 have you know basically accelerated the ability to get cancer there's been some skin cancer sp spontaneous skin cancer uh causations but the other thing as you said is it, it causes uh spontaneous erections and then in a lot of people and i'm one of them it also just gives you this like dry heaving effect sometimes where you're just like huh. what the fuck is going on right I, dude i very awesome story because i figured this out like eight or nine years ago but uh, my buddy gave me a little bit i had a plane flight i thought it was melanotan one and it was melanotan two and i literally was in the bathroom over the fucking toilet the whole plane flight it was horrible the stewardess kept coming back and she's like are you okay and then i'm like no i'm not please keep this door closed but so it does that to some people um and yes it does darken your skin color very very effectively but it for some people it darkens the skin color like an unnatural shade yeah, like that's like, why i always yeah. say like orange oompa loompa yeah. melanotan one however is only working with melanocytes or melanoid melanin cortoid receptor sites that are relative to your natural melanin production so hmm. you will only darken as much as like a perfect skin tan would be with your skin color right and that's why i love that now the really amazing effects of melanotan one is that it does enhance consciousness. Now, I wish I was the guy that said I was the guy that figured this out, but there was a guy by the name of um, Frank Barr. It was actually Dr. Frank Barr. And bro, honestly, like, I don't know how important this guy was, but it looks like Google has now erased him. And thankfully, his research is still in the TOT Bible, which again was done in 2017. But I mean, I was like researching him like four months ago because I was talking to somebody about this. I had done a podcast and he wanted to go deeper on melanin. And I told him, I said, melanin is like some pretty crazy shit. Like if you really understand like what melanin does, it's like giant biological 
energy complex stuff. And it's like more important than probably anything. And I said, look at the pioneering research of Dr. Frank Barr. And so he went and he's like, bro, there's no Frank Barr on the internet. And I'm like, what? And so then I started searching for him and he's gone. Now, his, thankfully, his studies are still in PubMed, but everything that's about Frank Barr is he was this researcher in the late 60s and the early 70s before he was thrown off of a building or I'm sorry, he was suicided off of a building in like 1972 in in, uh, really? in California. I swear to God, dude. So, so this guy's research is like insane. And he was basically talking about how melanin and understand, again, melanoid, melanin cortoid receptor complexes was like the production molecule of all energy transfers on planet Earth between all biological life. And I mean, again, it's in the TOT Bible. If you just research Dr. Frank Barr and you read all the stuff in there, and I have all of his research and stuff linked there too, which thankfully is still there, but you can't find anything about him on Google. It's insane. He doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. He used to have a Wikipedia page. Uh, but anyway, using melanin, melanin tan one, if you use it in a very light, surgically precise dose, and then you go meditate, you can get into stillness, you know, interconnected, connected to your higher self, whatever you want to call it, faster than you could if you didn't. And when I first started telling people about this like seven or eight years ago, they were like, you're full of shit. And I'm like, okay, we'll try it. If you're an actual meditator and you do this kind of stuff, you get, you know, go into moments of silence, tell me what you experience. And I've never had a person who didn't use it and obviously was using the real stuff not come back to me and say, you know, there's definitely something going on there. And then now I know other people, you know, Nick Andrews has like done like super level dosages of Mela Ted Watt and he's like, bro, you go astral. Hmm. <laughs> So there's definitely people out there that like are taking it to extremes. That's not me, but um, I just love melanin one, melanin ten one because of I did. I feel better. I'm much more spiritual. I'm much more connected to what I call what is, and then also it obviously just keeps me protected, you know, from a, a suntan level. And I don't really use it to enhance my sun because I mean, obviously, I'm either in Mexico, Southern California, and now in Southern Florida, and I get enough sun. You know, I spend twenty to 50, fifteen to twenty five minutes a day in the sun. Usually, first thing in the morning. Not today. Our house now is built so that the pool and the lanai, the sun comes in in the back in the later part of the day. So I kind of like going out there around five o'clock in the afternoon for about 20, 25 minutes and just sitting there and just relaxing and getting the sun. But um, melanin tan one is an amazing peptide. Again, just for enhancing melanin re- production in your skin, which will obviously automatically insulate you from um, skin cancers. Very cool. Okay. Uh, I always love chatting with you, man. So it's always, it's always a fun adventure. Um, get into some fun stuff. Um, you recently uh, wrote a peptide book. You recently are you're finished up. Probably by the time this podcast airs, your your book will be live. The thirty day uh, fat torching. Yep, thirty days to shreds, baby. Yep. So let's talk about both of those. You want to you want to drop people some some info where they can find you? Yeah, for sure. So I mean, the easiest way to get a hold of me is just go to my website, jcampbell.com. Uh, you can also go to jcampbell.com forward slash free books and literally get a copy of all my books with the exception of 30 Days to Shreds, the peptide book, which is called Optimize Your Health with Therapeutic Peptides. You get the first two chapters and the intro um, by just going there. I'd say probably by the end of the year, I'll probably put that book up there for free too, because you know me, bro. I give away all my stuff. Um, it's about helping people. It's about serving creation, serving mankind. So you know, for me, it's not about the money. I mean, obviously, I get just as enthralled as you are as helping people on a day-to-day basis and, you know, getting people in touch with obviously not just their physical health, but their higher self. And, uh, that's, you know, that's my focus. You know, this, so this newest book, 30 days to shreds, um, is 446 pages. So, I mean, it's unfortunately really long, but it's a master scientific treatise on how to lose body fat in the quickest, most effective way possible. And that's obviously combining all the new you know, GLP-1 agonist, you know, we go into like the potential risk, the rewards, all that stuff. But, you know, basically how somebody can lose as much fat as possible in 30 days or less and do it within the context of health and longevity. You know, I'll tell you, I've done that so many times in my life, you know, too many to remember probably. I look forward to reading your book, man. Yeah. I mean, I'll send it to you literally within two or three days, hopefully, as long as I get the PDF sent to me, you'll get it too. All right, brother. Thanks, Chad. Good pleasure, man. You too. And that's a wrap, ladies and gents. Hopefully you did enjoy this podcast. As I told you, we do, do go on some interesting tangents, uh, but always interesting stuff. And uh, guys, well, at the end of the day, muscle intelligence is here to support you, uh, to optimize your physical body, to optimize your metabolism, to optimize how you show up for what's important to you. And um, 
thank you for being here. Thank you for being a, a loyal listener of the Muscle Intelligence Podcast. I always do my best to bring you the best information to ultimately sift through the noise and give you information, not just from people who have done it in theory, not just from people who do it in practice, but from people who ultimately bridge the gap and do both understand both the theory and the practice, because that's ultimately where the rubber meets the road. And uh, you know, having done this at the highest level imaginable in the world as far as optimization of physical body, there's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of misinformation that's painful. And I think today uh, definitely gives you some unique insights into uh, what some people are doing who ultimately apply it at a high level. Gents, thank you. Ladies, thank you. I appreciate you being well. If you're not already a subscriber to the podcast, do that now because there is so much information out there. I want to make sure you guys always get access. We have this and so much more amazing information coming at you on to optimize your hormones, optimize your physical capability, your physical body, ultimately the way you look, you feel, and perform. Have an amazing day. And once one more time, a shout out to our sponsors for today's podcast, Bioptimizers. Head over to bioptimizers.com and use the code MUSCLE10. They get hooked up with their incredible suite of products. Thank you so much for tuning into Muscle Intelligence. If you enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to share it with at least one person you know. Make sure you're subscribed so you never miss an episode. This podcast is for information purposes only. The statements and views on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Ben Bikulski and the producers, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. This podcast may contain paid endorsements or advertisements for products or services. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest and products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical problem, consult a licensed physician.